Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Mike Stones. You are tuned into YouGospel.com. Right now, I'm about to get into an interview with the man who is number one on every chart on Billboard, Billboard Gospel Albums, Billboard Singles, Billboard Radio Air. No, no. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anthony Brown of Anthony Brown and Group Therapy. So, Anthony, man, how are you feeling today? I'm good, Mike. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, too. Uh, you know, of course, I was joking, but all jokes aside, your, your album you just put out, Everyday Jesus, is number one on Billboard Top Gospel Albums chart, number one on Billboard Christian and Gospel Albums charts combined, is number 11 on Billboard Top 200, and number nine on Billboard Overall Top Album Sales. And not only that, but your single, <laughs> Worse, is number one on Billboard uh, Gospel Songs charts. And I believe it's moving up on the airplay charts as well, too. So how this did all true. that feel to put your album out and have it received so well, so fast? Man, you know, it, it's a dream come true for any artist. I can't even, you know, pretend like there's not a great deal of excitement um, to have that kind of response. Um, you know, from your audience, it's just super fantastic. And uh, so I'm very grateful to, to God, one, for the inspiration behind all of these songs, and two, for everybody that jumped out there, you know, early on and said, you know what, I want to support that, um, that project. So I'm, 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 in a, I'm in a weird, happy space right now. <laughs> because I remember the last time I spoke to you was at the Stellar Rewards, and this was, of course, before you released the album, and I, I believe it was finished already, and you were just waiting for the release date. But we yeah. were kind of talking about the album. You didn't really get too much into detail about it. Um, right. Which now I'm looking back, I think that was kind of weird because it's like the album did so good. But when we did the interview at the Stellar Awards, you were kind of, you know. Quiet about like, it. Well, you know, <laughs> really, well, you know what? You yeah. know, Mike, so and you've been doing this, you know, this industry thing for a minute. Even though, you know, you may do something and you may feel that it's great, which is anybody worth their thought would think what they do is, you know, it's, it's good. Um, you still never know how people respond to it. So um, I, I was the same way with my first project, you know, uh, just super quiet about it and just, you know, hoping that uh, the songs would resonate with somebody other than me and my mama. Um, <laughs> and, and it was successful right. on the first record. And um, so I'm grateful on this time around the same thing, man. You know, you just never know. So... I remember that interview with the Stellar, and I'm like, uh, you were like, uh, you did a brand new project, Everyday Jesus, tell us about it. And I'm like, yeah, I did a brand new project, Everyday Jesus. <laughs> and that's, that's as much as yeah, I right. said, um about it, because I just, you know, I was excited about it, but I just, you know, you never know. So now that it's out there, um, I'm very, just, I'm super grateful and just excited that people have responded the way they have. Yep, and of course this is your sophomore project. Yes. What do you think is the difference between Everyday Jesus and the self title Anthony Brown and Group Therapy, which was your first project? The first project um, out was, um, it was great, and the body of work, I think, was it was um, a great introduction for everybody to kind of get a sense of who Anthony Brown and Group Therapy is. Um, testimony did extremely well. I was grateful for that. Uh, this project is totally different. It is a natural progression, in my opinion. It's a maturing record uh, for me, and it really is a record for the people um, in every sense of the word. This record, um, you know, for me was special because I went to God, you know, even when we were still touring the first record, I just said, listen, you know, Lord, whenever you're ready to tell me what you want me to say, just let me know, and that's what I'll say, and I won't do anything until then, and I didn't. I, mean, I didn't try to sit down and write a song. I didn't do anything um, until one day, the um the floodgates, if you will, just opened up. Uh, and for two weeks, um, Mike, for two weeks straight, I was just waking up having these dreams of these songs. Um, I would wake up, put the keyboard beside my bed. I would wake up from the dream, and I would play the songs out, and I would go back to sleep. And literally for about a two-week span, that happened like every night. Um, and this record is a combination of that. So I'm really excited about this one because I know that it was um, a direct portal between God and myself and myself to his people. Um, and what you hear on that record is exactly what, what you get from that two-week span of time um, from writing those songs. And so I'm super excited. I believe those songs will meet people where they live. Um, I think this project has something for everybody, um, you know, respectfully. I think there's something there for everybody. And uh, what made you want to decide to do this as a live album versus a studio? Uh, that's just the way I heard it, man. You know, live is it's super fantastic for some people. They love live. I am a studio kid all day long, man. I love to be in the studio. So um, this was a stretch for me as an artist even to present what we do um, live on stage and have to paint it and color it right there in front of in front of an, a live audience. 
And uh, when I originally thought to do it, I was going to do an intimate recording, like maybe like 200 feet, yeah. and you like very tight and quiet. And uh, that didn't happen so much. We ended up being at my own church, New Psalmist Church in Baltimore, which seats about 4,000. So um, even that was a little bit intimidating. Um, in order to pay for the recording, I attached a um, ticket price to it, and, and that was um, intimidating because people were like, you know, people are not going to come and pay to see you and come pay to see gospel, but um, we had a resounding, overwhelming response, and we turned away hundreds of people that night. Um, who were willing to invest in what it is that we do. And so I just give God the glory and the honor for that, you know, just helping us to do what we do um, in a way where, it, number one, please the him, but number two, that people can relate and um, support it. Now this is a little bit off topic, but kind of piggybacking off of what you said, just said, why, why do you think, because I've actually seen this a lot too, and my students working in the gospel music industry, but why do you feel like some people feel like they don't have to pay for gospel stuff, as if it's not like if it's not a, a, a industry and like a business. Like some people really have the notion that they don't, they shouldn't, or don't have to pay for like gospel music or gospel events. Do you kind of uh, could you kind of think of a reason why some people may feel like that? Uh, well, you know, I can't speak for people who have that kind of mentality. I do know this. Um, for me, um, I know that the the churches in our area now, we you know, we often have a lot of events and people can come to those events and they can see their favorite artist, um, you know, free of charge at their churches and so it's difficult to translate that from, you know, you know, go from that where I saw you at my church on Sunday to paying right. to see you at the hall down the street. That's a difficult transition for some people. Um but also I think that, you know, we have a responsibility as music creators, uh, to present something that is true. Uh, to the art and from the heart. And um, I think far too long people have, have been duped into um, buying and supporting a sound that sounds like gospel but really doesn't stir the heart, doesn't move the soul. Yeah. Um, and that's what people respond to. It's not uh, just because you put something out there that says Jesus in it. It is when you bear your heart right. and soul in song in a way where people can own that song. Once you do that, people will, they will support you to the end. Um, and that's what I'm finding with this record, you know. Um, I didn't do this record out of the creative space about Anthony Brown. This record is not about me at all. It is all about those who will buy it, those who will support it, and those who will live with these songs. I wrote these songs with, with you in mind, you know what I mean? I wrote these songs, these songs of what you would sing uh, for yourself to your God, and that's kind of the, the approach that we took um, and I think when you do that and people can identify with it, they will support gospel music. But I just think that far too often we just throw them anything and tell them it's amazing and, and force them to try to palette, um, you know, whatever we, we, we give to them. So I think we have a responsibility as well on our end to really seek God on what we do and present it in integrity. You did a 10-day Everyday Jesus Challenge. And, yes. You know, her like I, I, I'm looking at the first day, how I kind of told you uh, the first day was pay for someone behind you at a drive-thru at a Starbucks or something. So you know, I had to start on day two because day two was free. You know, day two was free. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So, well, you know that that challenge. Uh, what did you say? <laughs> how did you come up with the, the the days and the time of this for each day? And what made you even want to start that movement, the Everyday Jesus Challenge? Well, you know, the, the record in itself, the, the whole concept of Everyday Jesus is a movement for us. You know, Group Therapy and I got together at the top of the year, and we really started to plan out what this looked like. Not the release of a record, not a marketing strategy, but what does it look like to really um, let Jesus be a part of your day, let him be the Lord of your life on a daily basis. And that's what this um, challenge was all about was put, making people aware, bringing it to the forefront of your mind that we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ and that you may be the only Jesus that some people see. Um, so that was the heart behind this challenge, was presenting um, random acts of kindness, presenting, um, you know, paying it forward in a practical way, small things that could brighten somebody's day and, and, and yeah. really help them to see and feel Jesus from wherever they are. I definitely think that was an amazing idea because, you know, now on Instagram and stuff, they got the squat challenge and the ab challenge and the beard challenge. So it's like, of course, the Everyday Jesus challenge is something that... Oh, yeah. Is, <laughs> part. Right. Why not do something that's helpful for someone else besides, you know, yourself? Absolutely. What do you have next that's going to that's set up for you and group therapy for the rest of this year? Are you guys going to be a part of the final season of BET's Bobby Jones Gospel? 
Um, yes, we are. We definitely are going to be a part of um, Dr. Bobby Jones' last season, which is just so historic and monumental. You know, Dr. Jones uh, did a, a great deal for Anthony Bonner Group Therapy. We've been on this show many, many times. And um, as back home vocalists and also as um, artists um, ourselves, and I just uh, I can't believe that we're coming to this end of an era. There are a lot of artists who will never have that opportunity, and so I'm super grateful that we've had that chance yeah. to be a part of the show. Then you guys are also going to be on Sunday Best, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have this um, single out, um, Worth, and it's really um, a simple song, but it's really resonating with people. So we took that to Sunday Best this time and um, did a little twist with it. So uh, you know, you got to check it out and see what that twist is. But we, I paired myself up with somebody who I'm often compared to, and we did the song mm-hmm. together, so you'll catch that on Sunday best. <laughs> Can we have a hint at who that person's going to be? Can we have a hint? I just gave you one. <laughs> I said oh, it's yeah. somebody that I'm often compared to, that I'm to pair it up with on this song to do together. So, I mean, you just think about my voice and who you think I may sound like, and you got, well, y'all can put that together yourself. <laughs> All right, now I'll move on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Are you guys going to be heading out to Dallas this year to be a part of that? Uh, the we will. You know, the, uh, Bishop Jakes, yeah, Bishop Jakes is, um, you know, by far one of the most um, relevant voices of our time, and he has um, he's also been very good to Anthony Brown and Group Therapy. He's allowed us to come on platform with him on multiple occasions and share what we uh, what we have to share. And so Megafest will be no different. We will be there uh, to share with Bishop Jakes and, and support this movement. Um, it's going to be amazing in Dallas this year. So, yeah, you got to be at Megafest. We're going to be kind of strong. Oh, one more thing I was wondering. When we did do the interview at the Fellow Awards, I believe it was me, you, and uh, Canton Jones. And you two guys are saying that you were going to do a joint album together. Was that just a joke or something <laughs> that I really am working on? Canton is my brother, man. I love that dude. I think what he does is so fresh and um, and amazing. And uh, we were just chopping it up and clowning on, on you know on the red carpet. But um, as we were talking about it, though, we definitely thought about it. I was like, no, we should at least do a song together. So I would not be surprised. Uh, and I don't think you should be surprised if you hear something that combines group therapy and Canton Jones in the near future. <laughs> now, I know last year at the Fed Awards, you kind of got a chance to chill and just relax for the weekend. So I'm just warning you now, are you going to be ready for this upcoming Fed Awards? Because I know that um, you guys are going to be pretty busy with this project. So I hope you got oh, enough for last year because this year is going to be all over the place. I can already see Oh, my God. You probably signed Are you probably signing me? <laughs> I can tell, trust me, I watch this stuff all year long, and, and I'm surprised they didn't start kind of playing. And then, matter of fact, um, and speaking of the performance of the Bobby Don Gospel, I'm thinking about the last time y'all killed the stage on the Sun Awards. So is it going to – you guys always got something up y'all sleeve with some type of surprise. So now I'm really going to try to get to the bottom of seeing who this performance that you have with on Sunday's Best this year. Oh, boy. <laughs> 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 well, you know what, I think, again, I always feel like, um, you know, I want to try to present uh, what we do in the most creative form and, and the best light mm-hmm. possible, um, and let it not just be routine and mundane, because that's not the guy we serve. He's everything but mundane and routine, and so, um, you know, we do present things a little creatively, but we hope that people can, you know, grab a hold of it and, and uh, can enjoy it and be a part of it with this, so. Yeah, you'll have to look out for that. You know what I mean? We'll we'll look toward the Stellars as well, and hopefully we'll be able to be a part of that. It would be great to be back on the Stellar stage again, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm sure I'm going to be on the stage this year. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to say to your fans and supporters before we go today? Absolutely, I do. You know, I, I'm often tuned into you guys' school, and I see the amount of support and the amount of love that we garner from uh, both the staff that you guys for and also from those who support it and subscribe to it. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of uh, Group Therapy and myself um, for just a long history already of just love and support um, as you have guys kind of grow with us and we go along this musical journey. Um, you don't always get that kind of support from the onset. So I just want to say thank you sincerely, uh, Mike, to you and the and, and whole team as there are you guys for, and also all the fans and supporters out there. And please, by all means, keep in touch with us online so we know 
uh, that you're there or at ajblive.com. It's my website. You can keep up with dates and where we're going to be and also get merchandise, T-shirts, and, and CDs and the whole nine there at ajblive.com. Um, Twitter is AJB Live, Instagram is AJB Live, and Facebook is Anthony Brown. Please keep in touch with me and let me know if and how the music is blessing you. You're definitely more than welcome. It's definitely our pleasure, of course, to support great music and great artists as well. And we want to congratulate you again on being number one across all them charts. <laughs> and, uh, all them charts. Thanks, Mikey. <laughs> again, man, we definitely wish you guys the best, and we look forward to more more great music and performances coming from you guys. And we will be seeing you soon, most likely at Mega Fest or something coming up, because you guys are everywhere. But, you oh, know, man. we'll run into you. And, um... Yeah, man, again, we congratulate you on your success. Hopefully so. Thank you, family. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem.